Urban gardening, or gardening in suburbia as I like to call it, presents so many unique challenges and it is definitely a learning experience. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my best urban gardening tips that I have learned through the past 15 years of gardening. Let's go. Hey guys and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my best gardening tips for an urban space, which is definitely my passion because a lot of people think you can't grow tons and tons of food in suburbia. And I'm here to tell you that is completely possible. I know because I'm doing it. And I do have an entire blog post on these tips as well as some other helpful tips for urban gardening. If you want to go check that out, I will leave the link in the description below. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with number one, which is to maximize your space. Now, before I go ahead and tell you why and how and all of that, I just want to let you know um, there is a wasp issue in oh my garden. So we are going to take this. Um, so if you see me kind of like, you know, screaming like that, <laughs> that's probably why. There have been a few wasps that have recently made their home in my garden um, and I will probably make an entire another video on why I'm gonna leave them here um, and not try to get rid of them. But for the meantime in this video, if you see me kind of like staring off into the distance or checking behind my shoulder, that's why. We're gonna set up shop right here, holy crap. Ooh, okay. I know that the worst thing you could probably do is run, but I didn't have a choice. It was like this close to me, oh my God. All right, so. <laughs> Back to urban gardening tips, um, maximizing your space. If you can see here, I have about 450 square feet total, right? That is including the rocks, including my drip irrigation system that I have set up here right on the corner next to me. Um, I have 450 square feet of space um, and that's it. That is where I grow all my food. Now I was able to maximize my space in a few different ways. Number one, you can see I grow vertically, right? Like all of these trellises here, um, that's all food. They're beans and tomatoes and a whole bunch of other plants that grow vertically. And I have purposefully chosen plants that vine up a trellis. That way I can grow vertically and maximize that space. That's not included in the 450 square feet. Those are six foot trellises on just about every garden bed. I think maybe three garden beds at this point don't have trellises. But other than that, all of those raised beds are growing Growing vertically and they are growing food vertically as much as they are able to produce um, there is no limit on that another way I maximize my space is by companion planting so instead of giving you know every single um, plant in my garden the one foot or two feet or whatever it is that it needs which I do practice square foot gardening but instead of just abiding by those laws um, I actually add more plants in so I will take my thyme plants and plant them under my tomatoes I'll take my parsley and do the same thing um, and then just kind of companion plant where things are beneficial to each other. That's a great way to maximize your space and you pretty much still get the exact same production. I have not seen a drop um, in production from my tomatoes other than the fact that they have been eaten rampant by pests this season, um, but it definitely has not been because of the parsley that is planted out under them um, as they have had that for several, several seasons now and it's never been an issue. Another unique challenge to urban gardening is that you're gonna have different pests than you do in the countryside, right? You're probably not gonna have tons of rabbits running rampant through your through your garden. That's just not gonna happen because there's a lot of cars here, there's a lot of roads, and there's really no bushes and stuff like that for the rabbits to hide. You will, however, have things like squirrels running down the street, which you may or may not have in a different, you know, different environment. Um, you're also gonna have a lot of um, pollution from the air, depending on what kind of suburbia you live in. Um, there's just gonna be different pests. So that does vary by region. Um, I know that when they are doing a lot of construction and they still are doing a ton of construction around here uh, we live right on the lake and there were a lot of snakes coming in um, I didn't get close enough to identify the snakes nor do I have any plans to doing that um, but I know that that amount of construction and the fact that we're on water and everybody you know all of the pests and stuff getting displaced brought a lot of stuff into my garden we we're dealing with a lot of cutworms a lot of army worms um, and I know somebody who lives just a couple miles over which is more um, of a countryside it's still in suburbia but a little bit more remote and that's not something that they deal with because they have other natural pests to eat those kind of insects things that we don't have here now I have seen one or two ladybugs here, but definitely at my dad's place up in the country, um, I have seen significantly more ladybugs. 
I've only seen maybe a handful here and if I'm lucky um, but that's not something that we generally get here um, it would be great if we did because they eat all the aphids but it's just something that you know we have to be aware of so wherever it is that you live know what kind of pests um, get into your garden know what kind of things you're dealing with talk to a neighbor talk to friends who garden um, and just see what they're dealing with I have heard a lot of people say that they deal with um, squash beetles and that's not something I've ever encountered and I know after this video comes out I'll probably get tons and tons of squash beetles so hopefully that will not happen um, but that's just something that we've never had to deal with here and I know a lot of other people have to. Alright so I think I'm gonna try to go back into the garden very carefully. I was walking around this morning and it seemed to be fine. I might just sit kind of like here on the edge of the garden but the next step is to choose the right plants, right? You are not gonna be able to grow the same type of plants as if you were in the sprawling countryside, right? I can't really grow grapevines here. Um, that is the goal of mine one day, you know, on our property where there's much more space. Hopefully I'll be able to grow some grapevines, but I don't know if I would recommend growing grapevines in a raised bed garden um, on the side of your house. That might not go so well, considering that my dog is also here playing around, and I really don't want him getting into all of that. Now, another thing I've seen a lot of people recommend is mammoth sunflowers, and I would love to be able to grow mammoth sunflowers. Um, there are just huge sunflowers that get like, I don't know, six or seven, eight, nine, ten feet tall, whatever it is. Um, but we have a rule in this community where you can't grow anything above the fence line and the fence is only supposed to be I think like six feet so my raised beds um, they are about five and ten inches six feet just on that border right so if you are on the outside of the house you can't really tell that I have a garden um, you can't tell that all of this stuff is here and that is the way the HOA wants it so choosing the right kind of plants for your gardening space, depending on whatever rules and regulations you have, um, that is going to be key. You know, another thing that I have to consider is I can't really grow fruit trees in ground. Um, we're also not allowed to plant. We're also not allowed to plant in ground here, right? We're not allowed to have fruits and vegetables in the ground, which is why I garden in raised beds here. So choosing plants that do really well in containers and do really well in raised beds instead of in ground is definitely key to the success of my garden. Which brings me to know your rules, right? You are going to live in an urban space and have a garden, you're going to have some sort of regulations. It is very likely that you're gonna have someone telling you what you can and can't do. Whether that is city ordinances or county regulations or even the HOA, um, here we have all three, right? I have HOA telling me I can't plant in ground. I have the city ordinances telling you what kind of trees you can and can't plant um, and we have county regulations saying no you can't have chickens no you can't have this no you can't have that you know you're gonna have to deal with that if you live in an urban space um, even where we bought our property which is not too far away from here but it is more of like a country kind of ish environment um, there's still regulations regulating how many animals you can have and what kind of you know stuff you can plant and all that stuff so knowing the regulations that you have um, will definitely help you kind of like sidestep them. You know, I'm not allowed to plant in ground, but technically I'm in raised beds, so they can't say anything. All right, so next step is to practice kitchen composting, right? You are not going to be able to have um, a 10 foot composting space. If you live in an HOA, that's probably not gonna happen. Um, and even if you live like in a more liberal environment that doesn't have an HOA, um, you might not want to have a giant composting space. So what I do is I have my little tiny very discreet composting bucket rotating pail I don't even know what you want to call it it's like a tumbler thing um, but I take all my kitchen scraps all my chicken eggs all of that kind of stuff um, and I just dump it in the compost so at the end of the day when I am you know done pruning stuff as long as it's not diseased and all that um, I put everything in compost and then I I let it compost for however many months it takes and then I use that back in the garden and that's a great way to just be productive in an urban environment all right, so the next tip is to use minimalist gardening tools. Now for this one, we are going to leave the garden, which I can't say I'm too happy about, but considering the wasp situation, we're gonna get out of there. Um, and basically I have my little tool set up here. Um, we're on the back patio and this is my potting bench. Now this is kind of like the gardening area, um, Mr. Mini Urban Farm, hey Milo. 
Mr. Mini Urban Farm doesn't really love it when there's tons of tools and gardening stuff around. Um, so I have pretty much just taken this little area to set up my minimalist gardening tool space. All of my pots, my seedling containers, um, my watering cans for if I do need some manually water things. Um, even my seed starting soil is all here in this potting bench. Um, all of this is my seed starting soil. It has all the, the stuff in here. Um, and then all of here is just all of my tools um, I do have some hooks on the side here, but those are actually um, three tools that I left in the garden earlier. So at some point in time, I'm gonna have to go collect those and bring them back. Basically, it's a little hand trowel, a little miniature rake type thing, and a pair of scissors is pretty much all I have here. Um, in addition to, you know, my seed starting soil, my kits, extra pots, stuff like that. Um, but using minimalist gardening tools, like I would, I would love one day to be able to have like an entire array of different tools for everything but realistically I'm not really the kind of person who uses tons of stuff unnecessarily or hoard stuff anyway so really for me the, the minimalist gardening setup works out pretty well all right so next up is to have a mini greenhouse now this is my mini greenhouse you can see it's actually full of plants right now um, these are just some clip clippings cuttings that I have taken um, off of some basil plants an aloe vera pup that is going to um, end up in a pot at some point in time and then some things I'm propagating here in some water. Um, these are actually, these are lemon basil, right? Um, it's been really hot, so you can see that they're a little bit wilted, but they, I did just fill them with water again. And then just some extra stuff. This little mini greenhouse is great. I definitely thought I was gonna be more space, but it actually has a ton of space and I'm just able to house things that I don't get, wanna get wet. Um, during seed starting season, I take all of my seed starts and I put them right in here. Um, I don't use any other, any other space for that. Um, sorry for the mess, it usually is a little bit more organized, um, but for right now, um, just focus on the mini greenhouse. I really like this one, so. I mean, this has definitely been a lifesaver and my seeds have been able to germinate that much faster. Now, eventually I would like to have one day my dream greenhouse, you know, completely covered um, with pots and lined with all of my supplies and everything and tons of space to grow lots of things in the greenhouse. Um, for right now, this works just fine up until we get a bigger space, but for an urban environment, for suburbia, this is really discreet. You can, you know, take apart the, the little metal or plastic tubing parts or whatever they are and then you just fold this up this little, ah, this little, um, this little like plastic cover and it folds up into like this small little kit you can put it in a box and just put it away or if you move or something just take it with you so really a tiny little greenhouse like this works out perfectly all right i think i'm gonna stay here on the patio for a little bit um so i don't have to be running away from the wasp but the next tip is to use dual purpose plants and what i mean by dual purpose plants is to use plants that your neighbors don't really consider as like eating plants so a good example of this would be my rosemary bushes um i have rosemary bushes in like these giant containers they're much bigger than that um, but I don't think you can see it on the camera um, I have two giant containers um, with rosemary bushes in them and those are just bushes right a lot of people don't know the difference between rosemary and other things you really wouldn't be able to tell they just look like very ornamental shrubs or bushes or whatever you want to call it but that's a really good example of something that you could set out in the front of the house <laughs> Um, and nobody would know the difference. Another one is basil plants, right? You're probably able to grow basil and nobody would be able to tell that it's basil. Um, if they know what it is, then yeah, maybe you can tell. But a lot of things like that, you know, they have a lot of dual purpose. A great one is nasturtiums. Um, they are an edible flower. So for your neighbors, they're just seeing how pretty the flowers are and all the different colors that nasturtiums come in. But for you, you know that they are an edible flower and you are able to just take them and put them right on your plate and serve them in your kitchen. All right, so next up is to use square foot gardening. Now, I did mention earlier that in addition to companion planting, I use square foot gardening. Um, I do abide by the, you know, one tomato per square foot rule of, you know, square foot gardening. And then I fill in the gaps with a live mulch in the form of companion planting. But using square foot gardening is just a really, um, a really cool way, I think, to use like a mathematical way to map out your garden. I like um, the fact that, it, especially in raised garden beds, right, you're, you're usually not like in a giant pot you're usually in by like a, a six by three garden bed for example you know you have 18 square feet and in that 18 square feet each square foot you can use um, a variety of different ways you can plant out 18 tomato plants which you probably won't want to do because you know you're gonna get pests on all of them the minute one of them gets one pest um, but for example you could plant out you know two tomato plants and you can plant out a whole bunch of parsley and you can plant out some beans and you can plant out different things that work really well together but it's a great way to calculate how much food you're gonna be able to get out of your space. 
So I know that in a small space like I have, I have 450 square feet to work with, I really like using square foot gardening because I can calculate out the number of plants I'm able to put in ahead of time. It's not just like a free for all. I use that to calculate out um, the number of seeds I start, the number of plants, the number of transplants, all of that good stuff. And so then at the end of the day, I know more or less how much food I'm gonna be able to grow. All right, so the next tip is to get creative. And before you turn off the video, I know this is like a wishy-washy kind of tip, but it really is a good one because in a small space, you're going to have to get a little bit creative if you're expecting to grow a lot of food. It is not a common thing um, to grow all your food in an urban environment. It's just not something that most people do. So you're gonna have to come up with your own ways depending on where you live to get more creative. For example, my raised bed um, trellises I've never seen anybody else do it and there may be somebody else doing you know trellises over the raised beds like that but for me I've never seen it and so when I decided to build a trellis on my raised bed um, I just kind of came up with that design I have an entire video on how I build the trellises um, if you want to watch that but the way I was able to get those vertical gardening spaces in my raised beds was by building those trellises from scratch and just kind of like drawing out what I thought would be a good um, trellis space for the raised beds and it turned out to work really really well so get creative in your garden you know just try what you think is gonna work if it doesn't work scrap it start again um, but eventually there's gonna be something that is unique to your garden and your unique suburban gardening space that other places are not going to be able to do or it's really not going to benefit them but it works for your space perfectly which is exactly what I've been able to create in my own garden I hope these tips were helpful. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more urban gardening, urban homesteading, urban chicken videos, all of that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.